Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and continuing on from my previous videos where I tore down the ASRock Challenger RX 5700 as well as replaced the stock thermal paste on this card with liquid metal, uh, Thermal Grizzlies Conduct or not. I want to continue on focusing today on the memory. Now this back plate here is made out of aluminum. It's a magnet right there and they have not included thermal pads for this particular model. Now, I measured in my teardown the distance between the PCB and the back plate, and it's about 2.5 millimeters. So I went and hit up Frozen CPU and got two sets of thermal pads uh, rated at 17 watts per meter Kelvin for decent thermal conductivity. And I got 2.5 millimeter and a one millimeter. So what I'm gonna try to do is I might leave the stock uh, thermal pads for the memory on the front side of the GPU, but I definitely want to get the 2.5 millimeter thermal pads on the back side of the GPU to see if we can't use this back plate to at least dissipate some of that heat, specifically because GDDR6 outputs most of its heat towards the back side of the memory modules. So this should aid us in reducing the temperatures a little bit further, especially on the memory, because in memory intensive applications, I'm hitting 104C, not all applications, but in some. Now you may not see that from a gaming perspective. If you just use this card for gaming, you might see anywhere between uh, 76 to 88 at the most. But with memory intensive applications, you're definitely gonna hit higher temps because the memory heat sink, if you will, is not as beefy as we've seen with other models, specifically the uh, Sapphire Nitro Plus, I believe is what it's called. But let's see what these thermal pads can do in, in helping us reduce the memory temperatures on this card. We're gonna turn on this card one more time and then get it back into the computer and compare some temperatures from before and after. All right guys, so it's a new day. Did some testing last night. Memory temperatures did improve a little bit, but uh, I noticed an issue. So first off, these little rubber stoppers that sit right here, these are for vibration or noise vibration. Uh, I tried shaving them down because I noticed that they were all uneven. Some of them were, you know, 2.75, 2.6 millimeters, 2.5 millimeters. So I tried, tried that. And then when I mounted the 2.5 millimeter, which is the darker thermal pad, it didn't quite uh, adhere to the surface area of the back of the memory module. So I got some 0.5, put that on there, and I was still seeing a gap. And what I noticed was because ASRock and the way they have these things mounted, right? So we got two on the outside here and two on the inside. This thermal pad's making good connectivity. The top isn't, and this side isn't. And I also noticed that the back of the uh, back plate was bowed out. So I tried sanding down these little mounting points a little bit with some 400, 800 grit just to get a little bit lower. Easy tactic is aluminum. So I just put it on my knee and I started bending it. So now it's bowing inwards again. We're gonna see if that makes a, a better connection. You don't wanna stack thermal pads uh, because that's not gonna help you as far as efficiency and thermal conductivity. So the whole reason I'm doing this is to get rid of that gray pads. I just used the 0.5 millimeter to find out how much of a gap we were missing. And that answered my question. So now with it slightly bent inward, we're gonna apply this back to the back of the graphics card and see how things go. See if this uh, helps out. I'm gonna have to reapply the liquid metal and then we'll look at the temps together. We 
Gleich geht's dir besser. Tut weh! Gute Arbeit, danke. Hier, erste Hilfe. So, a few days have passed, as you can tell, and I had time to play around with this card. The Azrock Challenger 5700, first off, is perfectly capable at doing its job for its intended purpose that Azrock built it. Gaming. You don't have to mod it, you don't have to do anything to it. It's perfectly capable at gaming and gaming within spec. However, one of the biggest reasons I did it is because not only of the memory intensive application, like maybe mining Ethereum, where I was seeing 104 C on the memory modules, but overclocking it using the soft power play tables or a more power tool is increasing my thermal output and I'm not taking care of it. I'm not dissipating it fast enough. So the liquid metal, got the GPU core temps in check while the thermal pad, just applying thermal pads on the back side of the PCB because the memory modules, the GDDR6, output most of its heat towards the back side. The thermal pads was able to get that under control as well. Now, the hotspot temperature, because the liquid metal went down an average of 8C based over all my applications. The GPU core, 5C. The memory, 5C. So we were able to get things down into a little bit more comfortable range, which I am quite pleased with. Now, the thermal pads that I got isn't just regular Amazon thermal pads, because those are normally like 6 watts per meter Kelvin. I went to Frozen CPU, which I'm going to have linked down in the description below, which has 17 watts per meter Kelvin. So that's good thermal conductivity, which is what we want to get this card in check. Again, you don't have to do this mod, because this card is perfectly capable when you're using it for its intended purposes. But I'm using it in a way which is taking it out of its rated spec. So whether I'm applying the 5700 XT BIOS to it, or I'm applying soft power play tables and adjusting clocks, voltage, all that good stuff, that's taking it out of spec. That's on you. That's do this at your own risk, especially modifying it. Yes, I bent the back plate a little bit so that way it can make better contact. You might find a better way. If you do, comment below, but it, it was just a simple fix. Put it over my knee, bend it just enough, not too much just so that way it's applying pressure, applying the thermal pad to the back of the PCB. Steve from Gamers Nexus, which I'll have a video, his video linked down in the description, just did a video recently on the uh, XFX Thick, where they had to also make adjustments or modify the card, so to speak. Not a major modification. This isn't a major modification, what we're doing, but minor modification to lower the thermal uh, thermals of the memory and, and stuff like that. Just changing out the thermal paste will be a, a dramatic improvement. You don't have to use liquid metal. You can use cryonot, whatever thermal paste you have. I like liquid metal because I'm extending its overclocking capabilities by quite a lot. Like I'm hitting 2150 on the core and 945 on the memory, which is a lot. I'm asking a lot of this card and I'm also drawing a lot of power, about 300 watts. So do all of this at your own risk, but the thermal improvement that we got from all this, I think is something to be said. So if you got any useful information out of this video, definitely hit the like button for me. I do apologize if the content quality isn't up to par. I'm a full-time father, employee, and husband. I only do this on the side, try to share information with the community. I love the community, not only from a gaming perspective, but from a mining perspective. Oh. Definitely hit the like button because that's what I'm all about. That's what this channel is all about. Sharing tips, helping each other out, trying to get things to work better or improve, all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe for more content because I do various content, everything from, uh, matter of fact, I got the performance review of the Acer Predator Helios 300 coming up soon. Uh, share the video if you feel like it and comment below. Let me know your thoughts about this mod. And uh, if you're not interested in mining this card, there are plenty of cards out there that, by the way, can get the job done perfectly fine. Sapphire Pulse, Sapphire Nitro, Gigabyte, Asus. But then you got to consider pricing and stuff like that. In that case, if you're worried about pricing, the Pulse will probably be the better buy. But ASRock did build this card to work with in spec, and it does do that. I'm taking it out of its intended spec. 
So keep that in mind when you're making your buying decision. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate your time. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah.